Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? I hope you had a good summer. I'm happy because I'm back from my travels. And just as it's always good to go away on an adventure, it's also always good to get back, too. Today's story is an Anansi trickster story told by Toop. This tale is from West Africa and the Caribbean. It's dedicated to Apple subscriber Rowan, who is six from Delta in Pennsylvania, who loves Anansi stories. Anansi stories have been told in West Africa for many years and lots of people know them by heart. When slaves were shipped from West Africa to the Caribbean, they took Anansi with them. So Anansi stories are very popular in the Caribbean too. No one knows who started the Anansi stories, but we do know that Anansi first appeared in stories told by the Akan people in the Ashanti region of Ghana. The Akan tribe makes up about 45% of the population of Ghana. And did you know Anansi means spider in the Akan language? The Akan people live mostly in villages and grow their food on farms. You'll hear about one of those farms in this week's story. Lots of beautiful animals can be found in the forests in Ghana. I wonder how many animals you can think of which come from the African continent while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. What animals did you think of? Here's a few suggestions. Elephants, of course. Lions. Leopards. Antelope, buffalo, crocodiles, warthogs, hippos, snakes like cobras and adders and pythons, and monkeys and African parrots. And now it's time for our story. Are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Here's our storyteller, Toop. Greetings, 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 each and every one to Super Great Kids Stories. I wish to share with you another story about Anansi, Anansi the Spider-Man. This story starts like this. Everybody, you should know already that Anansi is a tricky kind of character. Anansi, one day, you know, he and his wife and his children, they were having a very hard time. The harvest did not come in, and so food was very scarce. Anansi... He turned to his dear wife, Asu, and said, Asu, I am going to the farm. You know the rains have not come for a very long time, but maybe if I scratch around and dig around, I may be able to find some root vegetables. Oh, and Nancy's wife said, Okay, my husband, I will see you. And Anansi went to the farm. Oh, yes. Anansi took his hoe, which he uses turning over the soil, digging, 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 looking for root vegetables, like turnips and potatoes and other things, until he struck something. Oh, said Anansi, I think there's something buried there. 
Yeah, 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 said Nancy. There's something there. And Nancy started to uncover all the dirt from around that area. And before you know it, Nancy pulled out from the ground a pot. Wow, said Nancy. Look at that pot. Okay, it's been buried for a long time, but if I clean it up, if I wash it up, I'm sure it can come very clean and good. Maybe I can sell it in the market. Yes. But then, as the Nancy held the pot, the pot began to speak. Don't you wash me, 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 you wash my magic away. What, said Nancy? A talking pot? Don't you wash me, 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 you wash my magic away. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 said Nancy. Are you talking? Are you a magic talking pot? Then the pot sang. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. What do you want me to cook? What do you want me to cook? Wow, said Nancy, you are a magic pot. And the pot sang again. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. What do you want me to cook? What do you want me to cook? Oh, said Nancy, if you are truly a magical pot and you can make for me glorious food, then I telling you something, I think I want some, um, I want some chicken stew. As soon as the words left Nancy's mouth, the pot bubbled. And before you know it, the food started to fill itself up inside the pot all the way to the rim until there was all the stew, the chicken stew, and Nancy put his hand. He started to eat. He couldn't stop eating. Until the bowl, the pot, was licked clean, rubbed clean. There was nothing there left to eat. Oh, and Nancy kissed his pot. He hugged his pot. He said, you are my magic pot. Then Nancy looked over his shoulder, right and left, to make sure no one was eyeing him, spying on him. And Nancy said, you're my pot, and I'm not going to share you with anyone anyone i'm gonna hide you and nancy took the pot he put it into the bushes he covered it over with some palm leaf and then he went back home when he reached home his wife asu she said hey my husband how are you did you find anything at the farm and nancy said no I didn't find anything. I was scratching, scratching all around, scratching, but there's nothing. It's very dry. Ah, oh, did you make anything for me to eat? And Nancy's wife said, Well, I put some hot water there. I put some salt and some pepper into the hot water. And basically, that's all we've got to eat. What, said Nancy? What? You want me to eat? Eat hot water with salt and pepper than nothing else? And Nancy's wife said, that's all we have. Oh, said Nancy with a big long face. Okay, okay, okay. And then Nancy slurped the watered pepper salt soup. And, uh, said Nancy, oh my gosh. But when Nancy finished later that evening before they went to their bed, and Nancy said, my dear wife, I just want to go back to the farm. I just want to make sure I put away all the tools. I want to make sure that the land is ready, and then I will come back home. And Nancy's wife said, OK, my husband, I'll see you later. i just tidy up. And Nancy rushed back all the way to his farm. He uncovered his secret place where the pot was. He pulled out his pot. He hugged his pot. He kissed his pot and said, magic pot. And the pot began to speak. Do not wash me. 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 You wash my magic away. 
Do not wash me. 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 You wash my magic away. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. What you want me to cook? What you want me to cook? Oh, said Nancy, you know something I could do with some lovely porridge. And before you know it, the magical pot began to bubble, began to boil. And before you know it, all the way to the rim of the pot, there was porridge, piping hot porridge. Oh, and Nancy put his hands inside. <laughs> And before you know it, and Nancy's belly was swollen with all the porridge. And Nancy hugged his pot. He kissed his pot. Oh, you're my magic pot. You're my beautiful pot. Shh. I'm not going to share you with anyone. And he hid his magic pot away. When Nancy returned back home, his wife, she was already nestling in her bed. And she called out to Nancy, Nancy! Did you put away all the tools from the farm? Yes, said Anansi. Anansi, did you find any root vegetables? No, said Anansi. Anansi, said his wife, then come to bed. That night they slept. Early in the morning when they woke up, Anansi asked his wife, Is there any breakfast? Is there anything for us to eat? And his wife said, No, my husband, I'm very sorry, but if you go back to the farm, maybe if you dig around, you might be lucky this time. And Nancy, that's all he needed to hear. He took his tools and he went back to the farm. He uncovered his hiding place as before. He pulled out the pot and the pot began to sing. Do not wash me, 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 you wash my magic away. Do not wash me, 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 you wash my magic away. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. What you want me to cook? What you want me to cook? Oh, said Nancy, I haven't had breakfast this morning. I would love to have um, uh, some stew uh, with some fufu. Fufu, dear listener, is like a rice which is made from pounded yam or sometimes pounded cassava. But it comes together a bit like mashed potatoes. It's very, very nice. And before you know it, and Nancy's list was rung out and the pot began to bubble and before you know it, all of the food that you, my dear listener, can imagine, all was there to the rim of the pot. And Nancy put his hands in. <laughs> oh, and Nancy was feasting, feasting, and then when he finished, he hugged his pot, he kissed his pot and he put it back in its hiding place. And as before, Nancy went back home. And throughout the day when his wife asked him, Husband, can't you find anything on the farm for us to eat? And Nancy said, No, my dear, I'm sorry. I go every day digging, removing the weeds, uh, uh, um, taking out the big stones from the earth. You know, you know the work that you have to do when you're on the farm. I'm sure we will be lucky soon. But day in and day out, and day in and day out, and Nancy secretly went to the farm to his magic pot to eat. After a while, one day, and Nancy's son said to his mother, Mom, I don't know if you've noticed, but Daddy's belly is getting quite big. And there always seems to be some dribble of stew upon his shirt. Is Daddy eating the same food that we are? The hot water, salt and pepper? Oh, said the mother, how can you say such a thing? You think Anansi will go and eat food without feeding his family and be like that? Come on, stop it, don't be like that. But that child had put a thought in a Sue's head. She knew about a Nancy. She knew he was a trickster. She knew how he is. So, one evening, when a Nancy said to his dear wife, My dear wife, 
I think I will go to the farm and I will continue my arduous work to find food. And Anansi was gone. As soon as he was gone and slightly out of sight, she followed him. She followed and Nancy, weaving and turning through the forest, through the jungle, until she came to the farm. She held back, and she watched from the bushes as a Nancy went into the farm, went into his hiding place, uncovered his secret, pulled out the pot. She saw him kissing it. He was kissing a pot. And then she saw him rapping and tapping and singing. Do not wash me, 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 you wash my magic away. She couldn't quite hear what was going on, but she saw what he was doing. There was a Nancy, sat there, with his hands down the rim of the pot, stuffing his face with food. She saw him trying to rub away the crumbs. She saw him when he pushed that pot into its hiding place. She saw him when he walked away. And then, as soon, she went. She went to that place, and she uncovered the hiding place, and she pulled out that pot, and she looked at that pot, and she said, so this is what he's been doing, eating secretly. She looked into the pot. She said, this dirty pot. How can anyone be eating anything from this it's all dusty and dirty. This pot needs a good wash. Now listen, dear listener. I do not know why the pot did not sing for her. Or maybe she just didn't hear the pot. Or maybe the pot only sang for the first person who found it. But as soon. She took that pot down to the river, and she washed, and she cleaned that pot. And before you know it, she returned back home, and she placed the pot down. And Nancy, by this time, he was out. He was out doing something or the other. Maybe he was down by the river trying to get some fish. When well, Nancy returned home, he walked into the house. He looked around. And there he saw the pot. His eyes opened. His mouth dropped. He asked his wife, Asu, um, um, uh, uh, where, where did you find that lovely, lovely pot? Did you buy it in the market? And Asu looked at Nancy with a squinted eye and said, You, you, you asking me about that pot? I followed you. I saw what you had been doing. You had been secretly going off to the farm and you had been eating out of that dirty pot. There's no food in it now. There's nothing there. And it was dusty and it was unclean. So I decided to take it down to the river and give it a wash. Maybe I will sell it at the market. And Nancy, he picked up his pot and he said, You... Y y you, you took the pot down to the river and you washed it. Yes, she said, I washed it. All that grease, all that food hanging around in the bottom would only bring mm, bugs and things. Mm, yes, I washed it. And Nancy opened his eyes and dropped his mouth even further. You, you mean to say you, you, you washed my pot? Yes, she said, I washed your pot. And then Asu was gone. And Nancy looked at his pot. He hugged his pot. He kissed his pot. He asked his pot, Will you sing for me? Will you sing for me? But of course, dear listener, that pot had been washed and the magic had been washed away. So, and Nancy was left saying, No! And that's the end of that. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. Wrap me, tap me, and I will cook. What you want me to cook? What you want me to cook? Ooh, thanks to Toot for that story. 
Poor old Nancy. He's not very good at sharing, is he? Do you think if he'd shared his magic pot with the Sioux and his children that he might still have it and it might still be magic to this very day? I wonder what food you'd ask the pot to make for you. It's time now for me to dig deep into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. First, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all our subscribers. You are helping us to keep making this podcast. Thanks to all our Patreon and Apple subscribers. Hello to Mum Kate, Dad Nick and Robert, who's six, and Teddy, who's three, from Dublin in Ireland. Robert has been writing his own stories and recently started making his own books. And he just loves telling stories. Hurrah! Well done, Robert. And hello to Mum, Penny, Olive, who's almost eight, and Isla, who is five, from Morrinsville in New Zealand. If you're an Apple subscriber and would like a mention, do let us know. And thanks for donations on Ko-fi to Lucas, who is seven, and Nadine, who is two, from Sacco in Maine, USA. They love listening to our stories in the car. And thanks to five-year-old Kavya from Hoboken in New Jersey, who has dipped into her piggy bank to send us a donation on Ko-fi. Thank you very much, Kavya. That is very kind of you. And thanks to Dylan, who is six, from Deal in Kent, UK, who has sent us a picture of the fairy changeling from the eggshell soup story. Thank you, Dylan, for your donation on Ko-fi too. And thanks too to Kelsey. If you'd like to give a one-off donation of any amount on Ko-fi or to subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get to join our Owlets Club and get bonus stories, early access and ad-free, then go on our website on supergreatkidsstories.com or to subscribe on Apple and get all those benefits, including joining the Owlets Club, then go to Apple Podcasts. If you're already an Apple subscriber and would like to join our Owlets Club to get word searches and storytelling tips and book recommendations, then just send us a message and we'll tell you how to join. And thank you to Sophie, who is 14 from the US, who listens to our stories every night for sending us a very kind review on Apple Podcasts. Now... You've all been drawing and sending just amazingly skillful pictures of our stories to share on our Facebook page. So, here's some thank yous to super great kids who have sent in pictures recently. Are you ready? Thanks to Arman, who is three, from West Bromwich in the UK, who has drawn a brilliant picture of El Cangrejo the Crab King. We love his googly eyes and his pincers and his jaunty little crown. Thanks for that, Arman. And Megan, who is six from West Bromwich, has sent a delightful drawing of the crow and the turtle. We love the intricate pattern on the turtle's shell and the crow flying gracefully in the sky. A super great drawing. Thank you, Megan. And Jessamine in Baltimore, USA, has sent a fabulous drawing inspired by Water Mama. Jessamine, we love the clarity and neat lines of your drawing. Very expressive. You've captured the man's shock at seeing Water Mama so well. We love it. Thank you. And Isabel, who is six, has sent a scary picture of Baba Yaga. We love her bright red lips. The scary colour really stands out, especially as the rest of your drawing is in grey. It's super great. Thank you. And Dylan, who is six, has sent a wonderful picture of the eggshell soup story. Dylan, we love your bright green fairy changeling and his loud demands for whiskey and tobacco. It's great. Thank you for sharing. And Griffin, who is six and living in China and from the USA, has sent a marvellous drawing inspired by Coyote and Baby Turtle, as told by Toop. Griffin, we love the way you've used the space on your page, the striking colours and your use of expressive writing. It's a drawing and a story map all in one. Thanks very much for sending it in. 
And Leo and Joey from New South Wales in Australia have sent a fabulous drawing inspired by Anansi and the hot pepper soup. Your bright green Anansi with his big grin on his face is wonderful and has put a spring in our step. Thank you. And six-year-old Hunter in Calgary, Alberta in Canada has been inspired by the blind man and the hunter story. Hunter, we love the vibrant colours of the bird of paradise which you've drawn and the soft colours of the forest and the sky. A brilliant picture. Thank you for sending it. And five-year-old Rafi has drawn pictures of eggshell soup and the Haitian story Tianjie and the yellow dress. We love the green baby sitting up in his cot shouting, Mammy! And the picture of Tianjie wearing her yellow dress surrounded by all her friends who were also wearing yellow dresses. Great writing, Rafi. Really good. Thank you. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see these pictures, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash stories. Thanks to all our subscribers for making this episode possible. And if you're a subscriber in the Owlets Club, I hope you're enjoying the word searches and the storytelling tips. Keep telling your stories. I'll see you soon. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London.